Hello, my name is Diane Honeycutt and I'm one of your Cabarrus County Commissioners and I'm excited to be here today to host this edition of Out and About. For those of you who may not be familiar with this program, it's a series of interviews about opportunities, departments, and what's going on across Cabarrus County footprint. So I'd invite you to join the Cabarrus County website, look for channel 22, and you'll find a list of those interviews available if there's something you might like to want to uh, catch up on or see what's happening in the county. And today, I'm excited to have as our guest, Tim Lauder with Cabarrus County Schools. And so Tim, I want to start just by asking you to give our viewing audience a little bit about your history, kind of like Rotary says, how you got where you are, and uh, what your role is with Cabarrus County Schools. Well, I, I, I'm a professional engineer by trade. I graduated from NC State University. Uh, my first uh, few years was in construction, the heavy construction with J.A. Jones Construction Company. And then I went kind of away from construction into the municipal market. I worked for the city of Concord for 12 years and was assistant city manager there. So I kind of learned the ins and outs of government and politics and that sort of thing. Uh, then I went out into the private sector and, and, and ran an engineering, private engineering firm for a while uh, and decided I was about ready to retire, but then Two kids went off to college, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll go back and do you something You were ready, else. but your bank account <laughs> yeah, wasn't right. ready. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so then the, uh, I was, had an opportunity here with the school, and I thought, you know, I, I worked with the school system, sent on the school board back in the, in the 90s, and so I worked out something with them, and I'm, I'm back here and managing their, their growth issues and their construction and maintenance issues, and I, I really enjoyed it. It's just and really I, a good place to be. With what your job description is you just did, you certainly have job security. <laughs> now let's, let's talk a little bit about that. We're actually sitting here in one of the new schools at yes. Odell Primary School. School. Tell us a little bit about this school and what's unique about it, when it opened, just a little bit of the history of it. Well, uh, you know, this school just opened up this past August, so it's only it's less than a year old, but they were still working on a few kinks here and there, mm -hmm. as all new construction projects do. But the, the, this is unique because this school is a three through five. Uh, school because it's, it's a, basically we have a primary and an elementary school. We, this, this district is so large we couldn't split it up so we created right. a 3-5 which makes the school a little bit different because you have older elementary old school here. It was designed for uh, about 940 kids um, and well it actually was designed for about 800 kids. We came back to the County Commission right, talked I remember about that. that. Yes. Added six classrooms because of our growth. Well, we, well, we, opened up with 720 right now we're right at 800 and next year we'll probably be another 100 so we'll pretty much fulfill it up in two years as we talked about right. uh, when, we, when we did it so we're very happy about that growth issue but the school itself is very energy efficient uh, it's got uh, all types of lighting uh, controls like the room we're sitting in has a, a lighting sensor and the lights go up and down mm -hmm. depending on how much nice. ambient light we have from outside that sort of thing all of our classrooms have solar tubes in them where they have basically a lot of natural light so in most cases the lights don't even need to be on in classrooms uh, we have a uh, water a heat pump system here where it uses water as its source for heat and cooling, uh, which circulates throughout the system as well. And so, so from that standpoint, we're trying to make sure this is as, as efficient as possible. We had hoped to put solar here, but you know, with some of the grants falling through with the, the state, we did not do that. But we are a, a, a very efficient school compared to some of our others at the, at the same size. That's great. Well, thank you for that. And I know that there's. At least two schools under construction that'll be opening yeah. in the near future. So tell us a little bit about what those are, where they're located, and where they're at in the process. Well, fortunately, those two schools are actually replacement schools. I mean, they're larger than mm -hmm. the ones they're replacing. But the first one to come online is Mount Pleasant Middle School, and it's a, it's a, a sort of brand new site right beside uh, Mount Pleasant High School out in the Mount Pleasant area. Uh, it's going to be a, for 750 kids. It has a core of 850, but uh, it's under construction right now, moving very, very well. A very efficient school as well. A different style than this altogether. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it, it's going to house um, that population, I think, for a very long time for us. We have a little room for growth there. Uh, we also have designed into it, into that site, uh, the ability to go back and add another three or four hundred kids on that site uh, for new construction. That's future. what I was going to say. Explain to the viewing audience what you mean by core when you said it has a core of 850. Well, we designed the media center, the uh, cafeteria, mm -hmm. all the hallways and that sort of thing to, to allow for 850 students without having to expand those because those are very hard to do. But you can go back and add classrooms much more efficiently than you can obviously add to the core. And right. the core is what we consider. So we try planning. To, we try to build the core a little larger so that we can house additional students as they come mm -hmm. online. So that's, that's pretty way. Uh, our second school we have going right now is the Royal Oaks Elementary School. Uh, it was a school built back in the 40s. It's a, a very small uh, school up in the northern part of our district. Uh, 
and we had to tear the old school down to put it on the same site, mm -hmm. which is a little different. Um, but it's going very well. We, 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 we moved the population from Royal Oaks into one of our other elementary schools very close by and house them there temporarily until we have that one on construction. So it will come online in 2018. So we're looking forward to that one coming on. It's very much similar to this school. The layout is very similar. Uh, in that case, we do also have solar built into that program. So mm -hmm. they will actually have uh, a solar panels on the roof there to make them even more efficient than this school. Well, that's great. Well. I know the challenge, there's many challenges and opportunities, not only for the county, but for the school systems as well. And one of those challenges is keeping up with the growth, uh, which requires schools. And schools cost, I think, a lot more to build these days than maybe they used to a long time ago, which provides funding challenges for us, as well as challenges for you guys of where you put the, school, put the children for the schools. But I know a high school is, is something that is in great need, and I think there's one of those on the books if people have been reading the news media and papers they maybe have read about it but for those who haven't tell us a little bit about what the plan is for the new high school and where it's going to be in the details well that's our next big project we have actually like, 200 construction this one's going to begin mm -hmm. construction hopefully after july once the funding cycle comes through the design is underway right now it's going to be on 100 acres at weddington road we decided to do the a centralized high school because we have growth at all of our high schools in mm -hmm. pretty much a ring around that space and we hope to be able by doing that centralized we can pull some of that growth from all the schools and give them all a little right. bit of relief because if you be one in the southern part of the county, one in the northern part of the county, all the rest of the schools don't see much relief. So this is really our opportunity to do that. It's going to be a very difficult time uh, for the school board because we redistrict every high school pretty much to make that happen. So that would be a little bit of a challenge and it takes some patience from our you know, your students and our parents to understand that they'll be moving to a new high school right. uh, uh, somewhere mid-year within their high school. But this school is going to be about 230,000 square feet. Uh, it's got a price tag of $70 million. Yes, which I'm, is, uh, I'm aware of that. Aware of Thank you, yes. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, that's still only, looking at it from that standpoint, it's only like $2.18 mm -hmm. per square foot, $218. And, uh, and the state average is about two forty-eight. So we're actually about $30 per square foot under that on our budget. So right. we just hope that the construction market and the bid climate here in about four months will, will be beneficial to us and we can come in at that right. rate. Uh, doing some very efficient design there as well. Uh, got three-story school we're going to three stories so it doesn't it's not so large a big expanse a lot of travel issues and also better for our safety issues mm -hmm. that sort of thing uh, so we feel very fortunate to be able to find 100 acres in the middle of, of Concord right. that was undeveloped to be able to do that the site has its challenges we've got a couple of streams throughout the property but those challenges also offer good opportunities so mm -hmm. we can be able to create almost like a small college campus situation where you have your athletic facilities right. that thing somewhat separate from the school that you have natural areas between, which is kind of mm -hmm. nice, I believe, but uh, we're looking forward to that coming online. So tell us a little bit about the Performance Learning Center possibilities for that site. Well, we looked at that site and a couple others, but the Performance Learning Center is a, a, a smaller high school. It only 120 to 150 students. Uh, it's kind of a, a school that allows people to have different circumstances. They may have some issues at home, uh, some personal issues that don't allow them to be able to perform well at the, at the high school level, or they may have some issues with a large population. They just don't quite fit in with 1,600 other kids. Uh, but it gives them more of an intimate environment, let them come in and, and, and get their high school education in an environment that's more one-to-one -one or, or, right. or that sort of thing. And I think it really goes well because without that, we probably would have lost you know, a couple hundred students to our graduation rate because they were just dropped out because they didn't feel like they, were, they belonged. And we feel like this is a great opportunity for them to do that. So we're looking forward to that being on campus and, and, and letting the opportunity continue. Yeah, and I'm really excited that our county has reached out and done that because I know I've been to some of the luncheons when they would have some of the students come in and talk about the impact mm -hmm. that that's made on them and their future. And obviously that affects all of our futures. And now we've got great students coming out and ready for the workforce. And it's a big part of what you guys are, are doing for all of us. I mean, obviously that has impacted our graduation right. rate Absolutely. overall because, yeah. you know, 100 extra students every year graduating, which is a great thing. Right. So obviously the growth will continue, which we'll talk about in a minute. But I know you've touched on this a little bit, the different design principles that you guys are looking at as you develop new schools for efficiencies, not just from a cost perspective, but from student okay. perspective in every way possible. So tell us a little bit about some of the key areas that you look at when designing new schools or looking for that right school. Well, um, at the, some of our biggest growth right now is at the upper level, so you know, in high school level, and junior high school level, and, and those students switch classes. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, they may only be in a classroom three periods out of four, and the teachers have planning periods. In our new high school design, we've, we've modified that to the point where we now are having teacher stations. They, have their stations. they don't have a classroom directly assigned to them all okay. day long. So therefore, during their planning period, 
instead of that classroom being open, then that classroom is utilized utilized by another teacher that would come in during that period of time. So therefore, we can build less classrooms but get more kids mm -hmm. into those classrooms. That's one way we can reduce our footprint and still you know, maintain right. the, the population we want to have. That's one way we're going at it. We're also looking at more and more uh, common spaces uh, where our, instead of having just a dedicated lunch room where you have this great big right. box space that you pay a lot of money for, we're using our common areas and then using storage spaces to bring our tables in and out so the kids can eat in more of a social environment and then when they're gone, they're they're put away and we can right. utilize that space for other things, for circulation and that sort of thing. Those are the types of things we're trying to build in to try to keep our square footage lower but still house those students in a, in a, in a positive way. Well, that sounds great and we appreciate your efforts to do that. And uh, as we begin to wrap it up, I do want to just take a moment and thank you guys. I know that the chair and vice chair of our commission as well as the school board, in addition to our management staff and financial people from both areas, meet on a regular basis. And what I think that's done is very beneficial to our citizens here because we're all working together. Uh, we know you have needs that we can't meet. You understand we can't necessarily meet all the needs right now. And so working together, uh, we're trying to come up with a plan. And we had asked you guys for like a 10-year plan, which I know you've been working on. It helps us take that and put it into our five-year plan and try to come together with consensus on where we're heading with the funds that we feel like we can do and keep everything in balance for our citizens on taxes, budget, and every other way. So tell us a little bit about your 10-year planning process, some of the key things coming up that maybe we don't have in the pipeline but are going to need to be addressed. I know at one point in time you made me choke because you talked about after this high school, there's two more high schools needed yes. almost immediately. and like So financially, that's going to be a challenge. but. But working together, hopefully we can all come to terms and how we, how we reach that effectively for our population. So tell us about that. Well, you know, the real key to, to having a successful plan is that communication. Mm -hmm. you, you I mentioned agree. Mentioned. And being able to communicate when this has to come online gives you all a better opportunity mm -hmm. to plan for that. And that's what the senior plan was all about, just to give you a planning tool that says, I'm going to need these these schools of a certain size at a certain area by a certain time. And it's time. fluid. We all it, know it it's going to change. Yeah. Because the growth is, 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 is changing in mm -hmm. this county. There's different pockets of the county that changes. Mm -hmm. You know, you obviously been in the real estate business. You understand how, how much growth there yep. are in certain areas for Absolutely. residential growth. And, and we're, this year we're probably going to see between 1,000 and 1,200 students. Well, that's, that's a lot of students. If we're not constantly building to replace those seats, we're, we're behind the curve. But we do have... Uh, this high school coming online and we have another elementary school that should come online very shortly thereafter in 2019 as well and that's going to be in the lower Harrisburg mm -hmm. area because there's a lot of growth in that area and we see a lot of growth in the population there. On the other side, you know, you talked about the other high school, right? because the growth, once we move this new high school, Central Cabarrus will still be probably about 150% of its capacity just because of the location we just can't pull that many kids out. So part of the 10-year plan was another high school, probably in the southern part of the county, to be able to pick up those populations. So we've got another high school, an elementary school, and then we have some replacement situations. Right. The replacement situations are the toughest because when you have growth, you're like, man, how can I just give up seats right. when I really need you know, new, new seats? But we have schools, three of them, that are nearing 70 plus years old. Right. And they just have so much TLC that's just really something we need to do. To replace, but we have to do that periodically throughout uh, the system rather than just carte blanche to start right. replacing schools because we just can't afford both and right. I understand that. And I do and, and it is overwhelming from the perspective of a commissioner as well as thinking about our citizens when you talk about the capital needs just from a maintenance standpoint that we can't get addressed and then a seven to seven hundred fifty million dollar ten-year plan that you go oh my goodness you know how are we going to address that? But the, the positive in that is we have the best case scenario. Your county is never going to stay the same. It's either going to grow right. or it's going to deteriorate. Fortunately for us, we're on the growth, the growth side. side. Does that bring challenges to it? Absolutely. Right. But I know we talk with counties throughout the area who are trying to, there's a neighboring county of ours that's looking to close eight to 10 schools. Right. So, you know, at least we're not in that boat. We have the good side, but it does create issues that we all have to work together to solve. So. Thanks again to you guys and the school board and, and your help in working with us to try to find a solution to that. We appreciate all you're doing and I've enjoyed visiting in this new school today and look forward to seeing the others come online. And to those of you in our view viewing audience, thank you for joining us today for this edition of Out and About. Again, we invite you to uh, visit the county website, Channel 22, find past Out and Abouts and you may just learn something about your county you didn't know. Until the next Out and About, we look forward to seeing you in Cabarrus County. Thanks for joining us. If you have suggestions for topics or location that you would like to see on Out and About, please contact us. Our email address is outandabout at cabarruscounty.us.